apocalyptic images from Hawaii, where wildfires have killed at least six people in Maui County. Violent and explosive wildfires have torn through the island of Maui, destroying homes and businesses. The fire is being fueled by a hurricane 800 miles away. It erupted so suddenly people had to run into the ocean to escape the fire and then later be rescued. CNN's Derek Van Dam is with us now. And Derek, we just heard from authorities in Hawaii. They st say the fire's still burning. And, and it's likely to continue as well, Jake. I mean, we still have the indirect impacts from Hurricane Dora and high pressure system to the north. So what it's doing is it's putting the squeeze right on the Hawaiian islands and allowing those winds out of the east to gust. Well, we just checked over 40 miles per hour in some of those locations. That's going to obviously complicate fire efforts. But look at the aerial video that you're seeing on your screens right now. This is imperative because uh, the, the fire that impacted the west side of uh, Maui, the, uh, the, the location, the economic hub of Miami, where all the resorts and businesses are generally located, where people go as tourists to visit. Well, the fire ran out of room to burn, literally moving into the ocean uh, as it literally had nothing else to char. But uh, it was just incredibly harrowing moments. Uh, there were adjectives used like dire and apocalyptic, and you can see exactly why with some of these first aerial visuals that we are getting. Now, everyone in Hawaii knows how to handle a hurricane. Everyone knows how to handle a volcano as well, as difficult as it can be. But this caught people off guard. As a meteorologist, we were watching Hurricane Dora slide well south of the island uh, chain. It wasn't a concern for us. We thought it was fish food, literally not impacting land. But the fact is that it created a phenomenon with the winds that no one could have foreseen, and it caught people off guard in the middle of the night when people were sleeping. So you can imagine just how terrifying those moments were overnight when we started to see those little flash points, the little hot spots on satellite imagery that meteorologists look at. We started to see those flare up. And that was a concern, and we immediately started to recognize that there was a problem. Social media videos start pouring in. And then we start to learn about the communications going down, 911 not becoming available for uh, residents over the western side of the island of Maui. Think how concerning and how terrifying those moments must have been for people not being able to reach out for help. Well, that's what people had to endure. Jake, All right, Derek Van, Dam, th Derek Van Dam, thank you so much. Joining us now, Quentin Kachi is the president of Blue Hawaiian Helicopters, a helicopter tourism company. And Quentin, you suspended operations to use your helicopter fleet to help get food, water, and other supplies into areas of Maui that are the hardest hit. Tell us what your staff is seeing in these hardest hit areas. Aloha, good afternoon. Yeah, it was a devastating night. I don't think many people slept across the state. Um, we canceled all of our tourism operation and just really partnering with the state and focusing on taking care of the people at need. Um, our, we got authorization to find a, a, one of the other airports near or closer to Lahaina where we can bring in food and water and support. Good thing about, you know, helicopters, they do have the versatility to land, you know, on different locations like a golf course or uh, this smaller airport over on the west side. But it, seeing it from the air and seeing the pictures just don't do it justice. It's just absolutely tragic, devastating. Um, several coworkers have lost their homes. We have um, business partners that have, you know, their complete businesses in Lahaina have burned down, and it's just, Tears just keep pouring and pouring from people's faces as we kind of work through the morning and all wake up and realize what we have in front of us. Tell us about how your own staff has been personally impacted by this. I know you're trying to help locate some of your teammates in these impacted areas who might not have even had um, electricity or calm since yesterday. Anybody that's been Hawaii, been to Hawaii, knows Hawaii. I mean, we're all Ohana. We're all family. Uh, we all love and care for each other so much, and it's this heart. It's just devastating, and not being able to get a hold of some of your coworkers. It just you can't stop thinking about it. We actually had I have a friend that's a runner has gone through in in the areas that you're able to ask to access, um, gone and knock on doors and got some verification that people are okay. But the fires are still going. The winds are still there. There's still you know ashes and uh, hot spots. So we just have to be careful. It's very limited. Um, the road from the airport, the main airport in Maui, the Kahului Airport, um, they call it the Pali Road. It's just a two-lane road that has been closed, and so there's limited access in and out. 
limited cell coverage, no internet. They haven't had power in 24 hours. Uh, so it's just really hard, and it's going to take you know probably days before we know everybody's okay. Helicopters can land in, in just about any terrain, although obviously it's, it's dangerous. Um, these are particularly dangerous conditions. Ha have you ever seen anything like this as, as a helicopter pilot? Uh, I'm specifically not a pilot. I'm the president of the company. But what we do is we're landing at Kapalua Airport, and safety is our number one priority. We do a full risk assessment. We evaluate the winds. We evaluate everything safety. And we will not go um, if it is not safe. So safety is just our number one priority. We'll never put our employees or anybody at risk um, before we do that. And that's why we're landing at the designated airport versus some of these other spots as of now, just because it is the safest thing to do. Quentin Koch, thank you so much. Let's go now to meteorologist Chad Myers for the latest forecast. And, and Chad, uh, when do you think these horrible conditions are going to get better? I know you said earlier that the, the, the winds, these devastating winds from 800 miles away from that hurricane, you hope will, will alleviate this evening. Because the hurricane is moving away. So as the hurricane moves away, so will the wind. What happened here, and, and Derek really did hit a good deal here, the high pressure to the north, and it was blowing like this. The low pressure, the hurricane down to the south, it was blowing like this. And so all of that wind funneling through the islands, and we had the hot spots, and the hot spots showed up, and then all of a sudden we had video and pictures, and it is a devastating event, block after block of the homes just gone, reminding you, reminding me of something from Southern California. 82 is the highest gust that we saw. That's just an enormous amount of wind when you consider how far away the hurricane actually is at this point in time, like 800 miles away. So yes, I mean, there are hurricanes can hit Hawaii and do, and we do have winds of 60, 70, 80 sometimes, but boy, this was just a dry event. There goes the hurricane category four. Look how far away the Honolulu Islands are. So it is going to be a brutal afternoon and evening. Some of the pictures we're seeing now finally coming in are are, are devastatingly painful. They really are. Jake, I mean, when you see the dark pictures that we only had this morning, and we thought that they were just hopefully burning trees, but in fact, they weren't. They were burning homes. They were just hot spots of what was left of the home. So there goes the storm. It is going to be a much less impressive storm in a couple of days. And the more it moves farther and farther away, tonight winds will be 40, tomorrow they'll be 30. And then by the time we work into the weekend, the winds could be 10, just about exactly what you'd expect from the trades. All right, Chad Myers, thanks so much. Let's go now to Jeff Hickman. He's the Director of Communications for Hawaii's Department of Defense. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, tell us the status of what the National Guard is focusing on right now as these fires continue uh, to burn out of control in Maui. Oh, hello, Jake, for having me. Yeah, the Hawaii National Guard is assisting both Maui County and Hawaii County, two islands. So on Maui County, we have about 39 personnel assisting the Maui Police Department with traffic control and roving security. The, right now, the number one goal for both counties and the Hawaii National Guard is to, to protect lives. And by setting up these roadblocks, that's right now one of the best ways we can do it. So the National Guard is assisting both police departments who've been working 24 hours and are running out of personnel um, to do it. So the Hawaii National Guard is assisting them, and I think they're even requesting more personnel uh, for the very near future. The Hawaii National Guard is also sending two Chinook CH-47 helicopters to Maui. They're on the ground right now getting their assignment to head uh, to their upcountry area of Maui on the slopes of Haleakala to assist with the fire suppression up there. They'll be carrying 4,000 gallon water buckets and be able to do drops about four to five an hour. And then on the big island, we have about 30 personnel also assisting with uh, traffic control and checkpoints. And the active duty army is assisting with fire suppression on Hawaii Island. 